Many thanks for the trainees joined in our YouTube channel to revise the testicular cancer in preparation for urology exit exams. Thank you for the trainee who has given the consent to record the session so that it will be a good revision tool. Um, the one other thing is uh, closer to the exam, try to relax more and try to sleep more because it's very important that you should get uh, the enough recollections during the exam. I think sleeping is a very, very good one. And uh, if you are not a heavy coffee or tea drinker, don't indulge and try to be free of caffeine. And if you are a good coffee drinker, no way you can change in the short time. Just keep <laughs> the routine practice. And yeah. the other thing is during the exam, since you have discussed so many sessions with us, Try to behave as if you are talking to us, even though the examiner okay. will be of a different stature and different uh, vocal modality and then they are in face to face. Exa imagine as if you are talking to me or Anish. So that will make you really a very nice calm approach and that will really help you. Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, yeah. yeah. And thank you for Anish for preparing the slides which will be used in the YouTube recording in the background so that uh, you can go back and uh, revise some values also. Okay? Yeah. Good. Your time starts now. You have a 33 year old gentleman presents with history of left sided testicular lump found during taking bath. How are you going to evaluate him? So I will see him um, urgently in a two-week wait um, clinic with a cancer nurse specialist where I will take a history, examine the patient, and arrange some tests. In my history, I will establish the duration of the slump, if it's painful um, or painless, if it's increased in size. I'll ask about history of trauma to the testicle, any associated um, urinary tract infection or sexually transmitted infection um, in the recent past. Um, I'll ask about risk factors for uh, testicular cancer, including um, past history of testicular cancer, family history of testicular cancer, and history of undescended testicle. I'll ask about um, symptoms of advanced disease, such as weight loss um, or coughing or breathlessness. I will then um, document this patient's uh, past medical history, um, including drug history. Um, and I'll ask also about um, if he's got children or if he wants to um, have a family. Um, following on from this, I will um, offer a chaperone and examine the patient, uh, general examination, feeling for um, any abdominal palpable masses or supraclavicular lymph nodes. Um, I will focus on the genitalia, um, examining the normal testicle and then the abnormal testicle, localizing the lump, um, size, site, um, and any tenderness. Uh, following on from this, I will um, organize an urgent ultrasound. I'll walk this patient down to radiology departments uh, for an ultrasound scan um, of a testicle to confirm a suspicious mass. Um, I'll also I would take some bloods, including a uh, football count using his liver function tests, um, testicular tumor markers, LDH, AFP, um, beta HCG. And depending on the results, I will counsel the patient appropriately. Okay. What are the risk factors for testicular cancer? So the risk factors um, include um, undescend, risk of undescended under testicle, um, previous history of testicular cancer, family history of testicular cancer, um, maternal use of steroids um, during pregnancy, um, which is difficult to quantify or elicit um, in the history. Um, there is also association with um, low um, fertility um, with testicular cancer. Okay. What is the prevalence of testicular cancer in the community? So the, the prevalence uh, of testicular cancer um, is about 1-2%. to Okay. And um, what is the usual age incidence? So the, the age incidence uh, depends on the histological type. So for seminomas, um, it's usually in the fourth de decade. Um, for non-seminomas, it's usually in the third decade. So 20s to 30s uh, for non-seminomas, um, 30s to 40s for um, seminomas. Okay. The scan findings showed a possible left side testicular lump measuring 2.3 centimeters. The right testis is normal. 
or what are you going to proceed? So um, this is suspicious of a testicular tumor. I will, in the presence of a ne uh, cancer nurse specialist, um, explain my concern to this patient um, that there is a lesion suspicious of testicular cancer. Um, and the way to manage this would be to um, perform an operation in the form of um, a radical ingredient lochidectomy to remove the testicle, but also um, to confirm histologically um, that this is a testicle achievement. Um, I will um, arrange for this ultrasound to be reviewed in MDT. Um, and I would also offer this patient, um, if he agrees to an orchidectomy, um, a prosthesis, testicular prosthesis, as well as spam banking. Any other imaging necessary? I will stage this patient as well with a CT, thorax, um, abdomen and pelvis. Any particular patients who require cerebral imaging like uh, CT scans? So if the patient presents with any neuro neurological symptoms um, or if there's a concern of courier carcinoma, uh, then this patient will warrant a CT head. When will you suspect courier carcinoma? So a very, very raised levels of uh, beta HCG um, will make me suspect um, a courier carcinoma. Any role for MRI scans? So um, MRI scan um, is not routinely used in the assessments um, of um, testicular lumps. It could be used, but ultrasound is um, over 99% sensitive, um, easier to, to get and, and cheaper to acquire. So in my practice, um, I, I will go for an ultrasound rather than an MRI scan, which would, which usually is logistically difficult to arrange. Any role for FTG PET? So FTG PET um, is used in the, um, for metastatic disease, um, especially for seminomas um, during the follow-up, if, if there is um, residual mass uh, following chemotherapy. Any role for bone scan? So um, bone scan is not routinely used for in, in the assessment of um, testicular cancer. However, if, if there is any suggestion of, of bony pain um, that warrants further evaluation, then a bone scan may be used. OK. What do you know about serum tumor markers? Uh, what is the importance and um, how do you differentiate with the markers? What is the primary tumor? So serum tumor markers are useful uh, for both diagnostic and um, prognostic um, assessment of patients with testicular cancer. Um, from a diagnostic point of view, um, certain tumor markers will likely um, correlate with certain types of testicular cancer. Um, for instance, we know that pure seminomas do not um, elaborate um, alpha fetoprotein. Um, Ten percent of them may elaborate beta HCG. Um, we know that hundred percent of courier carcinomas will elaborate beta HCG, um, and also non seminomas will elaborate um, a combination of um, HCG and alpha fetoprotein in up to ninety percent of the cases. So this is useful from a diagnostic point of view. From a prognostic point of view. Uh, post orchidectomy tumor markers will help in staging, S staging of uh, testicular cancer, um, depending on the levels of these tumor markers. What is the importance of elevated LDH? So, LDH is mainly an indicator of tumor bulk. Um, it doesn't, it's not specific for um, any other testicular tumors. Okay. What do you know about the half-life of tumor markers and why they are important? So the um, half-life of tumor markers are as follows. Uh, beta HCG is 24 to 36 hours. Alpha fetoprotein is um, around about five days and LDH is 24 hours. Okay. The, important of, the importance of this is that if um, clinically one suspect a stage one um, testicular cancer, then following orchidectomy, you'd expect um, a significant drop in the tumor marker levels um, a week after orchidectomy. If there is persistence or 
rise in tumor markers, then one will want worry about uh, metastatic disease or even disease in the contralateral testis. Okay. You said you will do orchiectomy for this gentleman and also offer testicular prosthesis if he is interested in that. Is yes. there any role for sperm cryopreservation? The EAU guideline uh, recommends that we offer um, patients sperm banking, preoperative sperm banking um, before orchidectomy. Um, the, the purpose is to cryopreserve um, the semen um, for use in assisted fertilization um, down the line. So I'll offer this to the patient um, and I'll, to, to prepare the patient for sperm banking, I'll explain that three semen specimen needs to be submitted um, with two to three days of abstinence. Um, patient needs to also have blood um, screening tests for HIV 1 and 2, hepatitis B and hepatitis C. Okay. How long the sperms will be preserved? So the, the sperm will be preserved um, for uh, 10 years and the first year will be funded by the NHS and subsequently um, funded by the patient at a cost of £200 per year. Okay. Why do you want to do HAV and HPSAG uh, battery of test for before sperm cryopreservation? So the importance of this is to determine where the sperm will be stored. Um, if they're HIV positive, um, they will go to a special um, sperm bank. Um, if they're not, they will go to the general sperm bank. Okay. We'll stop there. It's 10 minutes now. Um, any questions from yourself before I give the feedback? Um, I, I think I progressed well. Um, I, I answered the question. I'm not sure if I got to the end of the scenario. Um, but... Um, Yes, I, I mean, think in the exam, the testicular cancer will be almost like just one scenario. That's it. Uh, okay. There is not much divisions like uh, uh, evaluation for initial testicular cancer, seminoma, non-seminoma. There is not, not much differences. For example, testicular prosthesis, they may not even ask much in the testicular cancer table. They may ask okay. it maybe in technology table and otherwise. But since yep. we are revising, I just want to rope in everything so that by chance, if the examiner dwells in any particular question, you should be able to come out unscratched. Okay. So don't worry about completing the scenario, but in your space is good. I'm sure in real life, you will be uh, completing the scenario comfortably. Okay. Thank and, you. Yeah. And um, just to give you a little bit of feedback so that uh, the questions will be much more complete. The answers are complete, but how to make it much more complete. Uh, okay. So surgery in the genitalia during the examination or in the history, you can concentrate surgery in genitalia because any scars due to previous hydrocele or hernia repair could interfere with your surgery and also could warn you regarding the absence of the proper lymphatic drainage anatomy. Okay. And uh, in the risk factors for testicular cancers, previous history of intratubular germ cell neoplasia is one of the risk yeah, factors. Yeah, very important. Yeah. 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 And uh, while discussing the prevalence of cancers in the community, the 1 to 2 percent, what you said, is only for bilateral testicular tumors. Okay, okay. And the role for MRI, um, whenever a patient is not suitable for ultrasound, that's the same answer you will give for patients uh, like uh, those who are um, like pregnant patients or patients who are not very conclusive with ultrasound diagnosis. Uh, so if the ultrasound diagnosis is not conclusive, there is a role for MRI. So MRI will okay. be always the fallback uh, if okay. the ultrasound is not conclusive. And okay. uh, FTG PET is good in seminoma, but if the lesion in the CT scan should be more than three centimeters. And yep. uh, bone scan, as you said, there is no role for bone scan in testicular tumor staging. If you look into the TNM staging also, in the metastasis, there is no place for bone metastasis. Yeah. And sperm cryopreservation, it's 10 years or 55 years uh, of okay. age. Say, for okay. example, yep. if you find a tumor in a patient who is 50 years, we can't preserve yep. till 60 years. So 55 years is the maximum. But in yep. general, since the patients are, as you said, third decade or fourth decade, 10 years of sperm cryopreservation is available in the NHS. Okay. Well done. Can we 